guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Novelle France. It's two to four players, takes about 45 minutes to an hour to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. It's made by Jack Bro, and the idea of the game is you are French builders attempting to build before the snow hits. As the snow hits, it gets more challenging in certain ways to be able to build buildings, and you're attempting to use certain blocks to build the best buildings possible. You're gonna be scoring points based on the color that you're playing, as well as based on the level of the color that you're playing. There's going to be a times two bonus, a positive bonus, and a negative uh, negative point bonus, I guess you can say, depending on where you build and how you build your blocks. You can score bonus points by connecting your color. You can score bonus points based on how you place your blocks, as well as making sure that your opponents get less points when building blocks in certain combinations. There's going to be boards in the game that you're going to be placing down the blocks on, and you can choose, of course, to make your opponents lose points as opposed to you gaining points or in any combination there. Of. You're also going to get small blocks that you can utilize depending on when the snow hits that will help you in gaining more points. And then, of course, you're also going to get some action cards that you can use before each snow phase that'll let you either gain half of your opponent's points, let you switch different cards from the tableau when you're drawing blocks, and getting double the points you would normally score. There's a score track around the board, and after the last snow drift, everybody's going to get like a final turn, and whoever has the most points at the end, after all the snow has been scored and all the blocks have been placed, will be the winner of the game. Novelle France. Let's go down below. I'll show you what's in the game. I'll show you how to play the game and then we'll come up for a review. So here we have Novelle France and it's all set up for four players. And as you can see, every single player is going to get their color in action tiles or action cards here, as well as a three, two and a one block of their color. Set it aside and put them all in the different areas that the players are sitting in as well as setting up this board here. This is the point scoring board and it goes from zero all the way around to a hundred points. And every player based on their color is gonna get one of these wooden chits that you'll place on the zero, but I'm placing it over here just to make it easier for you guys to see. But generally they'll start at zero and they'll go all the way around as you score points. These are the snow areas here in which as the deck runs out, snow is gonna pop up and you'll be placing down the snow tiles or these big snow blocks on these specific areas here and you'll be scoring points points. You score when you place and you also score when you place these guys down as well. After everybody has got all of those, you're also then going to take these guys here and based on where they're from, so for instance the uh, chaplain or the priest is going to go to the church, the farmer is going to go to the windmill, and the soldier will go to the barracks, you'll then also take these three things randomly and you can sign them however you'd like, and then you're going to uh, place the points scoring on these little guys here based on the top color. So as you can see this guy here has green and the top is green this is silver with the farmer having silver and brown with the soldier having brown these are points that you'll score whenever you cover up an entire area of one of these three specific tiles after that you're going to go ahead and choose a player to start organize this deck so that there's gonna be three snow snowflakes assigned probably in the beginning middle and near the end the, the the book tells you exactly how you do that but it has a certain organization as to how you do that then you're gonna take the top two cards and place them on this tableau here this tableau is gonna have all the different combinations of five blocks and each of the block uh, the five squared blocks and each of them is gonna have a different type as well as each of them will have two of one specific color and then one of each other players color there's one two three four five six seven eight nine different types of blocks and you're going to be basically drafting these placing them down and scoring points to begin a turn we'll simply start with this player over here they're gonna get an option the option is they can either place one of these blocks here uh, they can also play these whenever they'd like before each snowdrift and they reset during each snowdrift snow and they have certain abilities. They can also draw a card from this deck here and place it down somewhere here based on whatever one it is. Sometimes you'll get the same exact one. And then they're going to select one of these two and place their block down in any of these areas here. This player is brown, so it's very likely that the player that is brown is going to want to select one that has multiple brown, but they'll have the option as to how they want to do it. They also want to look at, basically when you would, what you want to play it, is the positive, negative, and the bonus two points. In this case here, you probably want the negative at the top. So this player here can place this brick uh, right here, in which case everybody down here is going to score two points, and this player here is going to score a positive one. Uh, that, that's an option as well as maybe you could place it over here if you want as well, and every player will get a negative except for this player, which will get times two. That's actually a pretty good one as well, so we'll place it there. When you place, you're going to score points based on the color that you've placed, which is yours, so that he's going to get two points for this guy here. Additionally, you'll get bonus points for each color of yours that you've connected. So if there was another brick here that was brown, you'd score three points, even though you only put this one down. 
After that, you're gonna discard the card that you that you chose after the draft, and the next player is gonna get a chance to go. This player will then draw a card, place it down somewhere around here, and then select one of these three and choose any of the blocks they would like. This player is yellow, so yellow is probably gonna select, uh, eh, we'll select this one here. And then they get to go ahead and choose to place it anywhere they'd like. Now remember, it has to fit. There's a couple rules to placing blocks. And the first rule is uh, when you place, you can never go higher than three and you can never place underneath a block. So if, for instance, that was there, he can never place something underneath the block. He can only always play over and only if it doesn't go higher than three. So this is a good play for him. And that actually will let him get times two points when the snow falls. In addition, he's gonna score two points for playing a brick that has two on there. And of course, it's gonna score a brown minus one and uh, this blue one minus one and then plus one for, for, uh, for white. So two points is gonna to go to this player here. And then the next player is gonna get a chance to go. And you're gonna keep doing that, choosing the different ones, making sure to remove the cards, drawing a new one, selecting the space it goes to. Which one is this one here? This one goes to here. And then, let's see, maybe we can show you something interesting. Well, oh, white might wanna do this one here. And I'll remove this card. Time to place this guy down somewhere. Oh, positive two points is not never bad. Maybe a place just like that, scoring two more points for white. Blue's turn, blue's gonna draw. Let's place this guy over here. Maybe blue will want this one here and blue's going to try and score double points. Now he could place it like this. And when that happens, that's gonna connect his blue, which will score him three points. But at the end of the game, if there is, uh, at the end of the game, he's gonna score negative three points for having three colors up here. So that might not be the best. When instead, maybe something like, oh, I don't know, maybe something like this might be a good option because that's gonna score him one, two, and three points. And then it'll give him a positive, it'll give him two points there. So maybe he'll do that. That'll give him three points. And then now it is Brown's turn. So utilizing the different blocks that other players have played is usually a good option to do so. You're gonna score a boatload of points if you can manage to get all of your colors as best as possible. We'll go through one more turn here. This one will go here. Brown might want this one here. And maybe Brown will do something like this. That's going to score one, two, three, four points for Brown. And uh, one, two, three, and four. And that's the idea of the game. Now there's also these guys here, which are going to be played on your turn prior to a snow card falling. Because once the snow card comes, these guys all get refreshed. So make sure you use them beforehand. You have this one here, which is the Flute Fiddle du Roy. I hope I'm saying that right. Which doubles your points on a turn. This one is a Huron, which allows you to draw a card, select another card, and switch it out for that specific card, which is kind of useful as well. Um, and then you have this one over here, which is going to give you half the points that your opponent scores on their turn, minus if they played this card. If they played this card, if they got five, and they times by two, they'd get ten. You would actually only get two points, because it's five divided by two, and you're going to take the lower rounded down half. And uh, basically what's going to happen is eventually these cards are going to keep getting flipped over, card blocks are going to get filled down, and then you're going to run into a snowflake card, which is this guy here. When this happens, all of these different areas here are going to be covered in snow. And how you do that is you literally take these snow blocks here and place them like this. And then players are going to score based on the bottom tier of each of these areas here. So that one's going to get that, this one over here. Let's see if I can move this one a little bit, make it easier to see, eh, something like this. And they're all gonna score on the bottom. This would be minus points for everybody who has colors on the bottom. And then, there we go. And then this one over here as well is going to score nothing for anybody because nobody placed here apparently. Uh, and that is the idea, basically. You're gonna keep going, uh, and there's certain rules. When the snow covers a certain area here, so for instance, this bottom row is now covered, no one's gonna score negative or positive or multiple points uh, when placing on the bottom row because it's covered in snow, but you'll still be scoring the second and third rows. Additionally, you have these little blocks that instead of taking a card and playing one down, you can simply play one of these, but there's specific rules for each of them. The three block can be played before the first snow. The two block can be played after the first, but before the second. And then the, the one block can be played after the second, but before the third, because the third ends the game. And these are very, very useful if you want to score multiple points. So for instance, I could play something like this, and that's going to score me three plus the one that's connected to, which is four points with white. Pretty useful. Play, keep, play continues until another snow card comes out, in which case you're then going to take the next one of these guys here in place and then you're going to score the second portion so there's two basic rounds of scoring it's when you place and then when you place the snow down as well until the third one until the 
the final snow comes out. When that happens, you'll score the top value, and that will totally tally, tally your total points. Uh, additionally, what's also interesting is when you cover all the spaces in, in bricks, you're going to score if you're the last person. So for instance, if this entire area got covered in bricks, the person who did the last one is going to score 10 points. They'll take this guy, score 10 points, and that'll be added to the total final score at the end of the game. And don't forget to always reset these before uh, after each snow drift because they're going to be very, very useful to you. Eventually, these blocks will run out and you'll have less and less choices as the game progresses and you'll probably be scoring a little less so you want to kind of set yourself up throughout this entire game of Novel France. That's the basic idea of how you play the game and how you score. Let's come up and I'll talk about it now. Novel France. Now other than the fact that I'm probably butchering the name of that and pretty much everything in the game just because I don't speak French and I do not understand how to pronounce it, pronounce it, pronunciate it, <laughs> the game is solid. This is a fun puzzle game. If you like puzzle games it's one I would definitely suggest picking up right off of the bat. This is a game that I instantly thought my wife would enjoy, and it's a game that me and Grant played. It was very cutthroat, very tough decisions, and uh, you're basically just trying to place down as fast as you can, as best as you possibly can before the snow falls, because that kind of re removes certain points in the game. There's certain ones you want to place on that will net you more points than others, and utilizing certain blocks will help you. Trying to collect bonus points when you're placing, as well as bonus points when the snow falls, is also very important. How you choose to place things matters. You have to make sure that when you build, it has to be attached, and it can't be off. So for instance, I'll go ahead and show you an example. If you wanted to build on this little guy here, you couldn't place like this. You couldn't place it like this. You have to actually literally place it so that it matches. And this one's pretty pretty challenging when you have to place it by like this. But uh, there's certain ones that you have to try in your best to figure out the best puzzle. This game is very puzzly. For those of you who like puzzly style games, you're going to enjoy this one. All the different blocks are five blocks, but they each have two of a specific color and then one of each other color. And there's nine choices and the choices get removed as the game progresses. There's literally four of each card and basically when those four cards go, so do all the blocks in which case you have only uh, certain things to utilize. My only complaint, I, I would say, or like a uh, statement on the game is as the game progresses, there's less and less choice and you score less because you don't have the best options as you did at the beginning of the game. And most of the snow is covering a lot of stuff. So you're basically trying to score these little dudes here to try and gather their points because they give you quite a bit and they can actually turn around a game and make you win. I'm neutral to the dudes as for placing around the border, but I can see how they can be a fun aspect as, oh, do I want to go ahead and chance it? Because there's no blocks that can cover three spaces now. But when it comes to my turn, will there be blocks, uh, will, will, but before it comes to my turn, will somebody place? So do I want to go ahead and risk that? So there is like a little bit of like daring yourself to do certain things as well as saying, you know what, I'm going to play safe. I'm going to score as many points as possible, give, as pe give people as many negative points as possible, and avoid the bonus points until it's absolutely necessary. But it will happen eventually. The game is really simple. I, I can teach you how to play this game in probably five minutes in person, and hopefully you have a good understanding just from this video as to how it's played. The rounds are very quick. The turns are very quick. You choose one, place it down, look at the three, select one of those, choose a block, and place it. But for those of you who have analysis paralysis, there's so many options, and, and basically there's certain, like, ways you can rotate them, how you want to place them, it becomes a little bit of a Tetris puzzle. It can slow the game down if you have certain players that are like, I want to meticulously place this to make the best option possible. And that happens more and more at the end of the game, the beginning, even though you're usually scoring more points at the beginning, minus the bonus ones. These cards here are super nice, super nifty, and it was something that I never expected expect in these type of games. It actually lets you refresh them, you get double points, half the points of somebody else's. And then of course the swapping one is actually really useful, very interesting. Interesting. Uh, you also get these little these little squares that you want to place down before, before each certain snowdrift, and they can net you a ton of points. I lost my game, my first game specifically because I didn't play these very well, and afterwards I realized how powerful they are and how you can utilize them to fill in certain spaces. Even this little one block, if you've got a square that's got seven whites and you place this one in there, that's eight points. And then after that, you can play a doubler, which gives you 16 points, which is more than the highest dude that covers the board. So these are very, very useful. It's a very beautiful game, and you're playing as French builders, trying to become the master builder. There's probably a lot of games that are similar to this theme, but with when in France, it, it becomes kind of interesting. I like games that involve this era, and I like the feel of the game. It actually does feel like snow is falling and time is running out, and there's less and less options to build because there's more and more snow. I enjoyed this game. Puzzlers out there will enjoy this game. People who are not prone to analysis paralysis will like this game. And if you also don't mind a little bit of aggressive actions that can be played 
on other players' turn to affect you, give you negative points, you'll lose certain certain cards that you'll want. Sometimes you're not gonna get the best option that you would have preferred. Anything other than that, though, this is a solid puzzle-style game. One I, I, I assume will do very, very well because of how brilliant and beautiful the game is. I really, really enjoyed this one, but I think it'll be up to you as the player to determine if this game is for you. Go ahead and take a look down below in the description for Nouvelle France and let me know what you think about the game.